So recently I've been working on getting a lot of my fitness data. I'm using this new fitness app called Strong and I'm trying to get this data into my Postgres database and create dashboards and reports, metrics and things that help me figure out how I'm doing or see analysis and trends and just overall I would like a centralized dashboard of informational and analytical reporting on my fitness data. And I've been working on this project for a while. I've been wanting to get this all kind of wrapped up and it got me thinking. The other day, or last week, I put out a video on Obsidian Canvas. And I really like working with Canvas. It's really making it a lot easier to organize a lot of my thoughts, a lot of my literature notes, ideas, concepts, all this stuff. It's making it really easy to visually lay it all out and work with it. So I thought, what about doing a dashboard for all of my vault in Obsidian Canvas because it's all spread out, it's all in one layer, it's all there, visible, but you can embed notes or even just cards that have things like data view queries in them and there's a lot of possibilities that we can do there. But would it work with everything that I have in my vault and the way that I run my vault? If you like the shirt I'm wearing, which I'm kind of a big fan, kind of reminds me of Grovebox a little bit over here, the color scheme I like, and I just love good Shinto looking shrines. If you like my shirt, then you can check out Into the AM. Into the AM, I've talked about them before on my channel, and I really love their t-shirts because they're very soft. The sizing is really nice because I like a nice, you know, baggy t-shirt. Uh, it really helps with like my sensory sensitivities. It's soft, it's baggy, it's true to size, and they have a lot of really cool looking options that I'll be, you know, you'll probably see several different t-shirts in uh, various videos of mine throughout the future, but if you like the designs, check it out. They even have uh, bundle deals right now. You can check out the link in my description, pin comment, all the places, and uh, you get 10% off and check them out. You'll probably like it. All right, let's check out this dashboard. So I don't have a terribly large amount of stuff on here because again, I don't want to just inundate myself with visual spam, but there's a lot of different things. And I will tell you at the end, like one problem that I did have, uh, all right, probably just in the middle too. So let's start off from left to right. What do I have going on? Because this is organized in a particular way. So starting off on the far side, I do have a note where I just have like top of mind ideas, things that I wanted to like return to, or that I just wanted to spend more time thinking about. And so this is just put here as I just work through glancing at my dashboard. Uh, from start to finish. I also like to think of it kind of like a, uh, a book. Well, I mean, I'm English speaking, so I read left to right, so it just makes sense for me. The next one I have is a note with an embedded data view query for all of the tasks in my vault. I haven't gotten to the, quite to the point of actually separating this out to be uh, specific to the various areas of my vault that I have, because I have at least three specific and distinct areas. Um, but this basically just gives me every non-completed link, non-completed task in my entire vault, except for the one in my like annual goals file, because I just check that regularly. I don't need this on here. But there's a lot of stuff here from like coding or um, physical education stuff or even the workbench, which is what's next. Whoop. So if we go down to the workbench, the workbench is basically my scratch pad. I put a lot of stuff on here, stuff I just want to get around to or mess with. And so there's still a lot of things that I haven't gotten around to on this particular uh, file, but hey, maybe I'll do it one day. So I'm structuring this starting off with the left side of my dashboard <clears throat> is all of this like miscellaneous tasks, things to get around to, or just top of mind ideas. Now, <clears throat> this is stuff that I haven't touched yet. It's stuff that I want to get around to. What I'm going to do now is go into, I've actually started working on something like a, an input, a podcast, an article, a book. So we're gonna go into that section. And starting off, I have a note. Really, it's, again, another glorified query, uh, data view query, that tells me what are all of the items in my Readwise folder, because I use Readwise and I sync a lot of my notes and things to Readwise, my Kindle notes, article highlights, um, uh, what else, podcast notes from Air, a lot of things go for me through Readwise and then sync to my Obsidian Vault. 
So what this does for me is that if I don't get on top of all of those inputs and notes, then it kind of builds up a pile. So what I have is telling me the last time I checked this because I can't just change these notes because they automatically either get overwritten in the sync or it's just stuff I don't want to mess with. So what I do is I have this query that lists out everything based on the date I completed it from Readwise. So you can see that I was listening to a lot. I did a lot of articles on that day because Juju Mufu is amazing. Um, but a lot of podcasts when I was doing a lot of walking earlier this year when it was cool. And I haven't gotten around to processing all these notes yet. So I leave a inline variable for data view and I use this to determine where I left off on processing all of these items so that I know where to pick back up back from the beginning. If I happen to process something way here, way down here early on that I just finished and I just wanted to take the notes and do that now, I'm not going to hold myself back from doing that because I do what the coins allow me to do. If you don't know about my coins analogy, check out some of my earlier videos, mental processing. So I do what the coins allow. And if I want to process something, I'm going to do it. But then that messes up this workflow. So I will then actually add exclusions where um, and file.day is not equal to something because I could just do, that's easier than listing out the name of the note. So I can just do this and exclude the things that I don't care about. And so I can also, what I do is I just list it here so I know what it is human readably, uh, what I'm excluding. But if I change this variable right here and change it to, um, I think I, I could do that one, and then let the query update, you can see that now it's shifted everything up because it removed everything that is uh, after or before that date removed. So adding it back, it will recalculate and there we go, everything's back. So this helps me keep track of where I need to pick up on my Readwise inputs or things that I need to process from Readwise, which is a lot. It's kind of building up on me. Eh. Um, then I'll get back to this one. Then moving onwards more towards the inputs or the notes that came out of like the Readwise items or just everything else. So I've already shown this many, many times. It's kind of gone through several iterations, but this is just the general flow of my processing um, system. And right now it's written with, well, it's done with draw IO and then embedded inside of a note and then embedded inside a canvas. It's roundabout, but I don't like mermaid much anymore. It's kind of hard to edit the way that I like and draw IO is just amazing. So I, that there's that, um, but moving on. The notes that I actually want to process because they are more of a precipitate output or just these are in a folder and it bothers me to have clutter so I need to get this processed and move it along. And so I have three main inboxes based on the three major areas of my vault right now. One of them is my main Zettelkasten inbox. So that is all of these various items. Mostly I'm just focusing on unmasking autism still, still processing those notes. And there's a lot of other stuff that I want to get to in there, but most of it is actually media files. So they don't appear here in the query. This only shows uh, markdown files. So there's that. Uh, I am refactoring my devlog notes from uh, the way that I had them in Dendron into Obsidian uh, again, which is a lot. It's about 1,000 or 900, 800 notes to process. So I have this query limited to 30 so that it doesn't like lag everything. But there's a lot to go through in here, so hopefully eventually this will be much more concise and small. Uh, and then lastly is my inbox for my fitness and health related notes. So if you didn't know, like I've been, you know, I'm a really big nerd. I love programming. I got my server rack behind me. I got all kinds of stuff technologically going on. I was into like fitness and training and strength training and all kinesiology and all that stuff for like almost a decade before I even started really like doing a lot of coding. So it's already a big passion of mine and a very big interest. So I have a lot of notes that I'm developing on all of this and I'll do a vault tour and I'll go through that whole system when I get it into a nicer, cleaner state. It's kind of messy right now. I haven't had a lot of time to work on it and I do what the coins allow. So we'll get there eventually. And I'll show you all about that. Moving forward is kind of just like a summary overview. I'm just using, um, again, more data view. Data view obviously makes a very big portion of what I have going on. 
uh, a bunch of different queries to just list out the folders and how many notes are in the folders. And these are basically places where the notes need to be processed and then put into the corresponding Zettelkasten folder or just the dumping ground, but with all the tags and organizational links and everything already set up for it. So these are all the things that I still need to process. So all these lists of notes over here, they're summarized based on folders over here in this list. And you can see that my devlog has a lot of folders from when I converted it from Dendron back into Obsidian with a Python script. Yikes, lots to go through still. And then you've probably seen this one before, but this is my timeline note, which automatically pulls all of my notes based on the special symbols with the dates in the titles and displays you know, nice pretty output with supercharged links of what the type is as well as the status of processing. Granted, I also have the symbol and the date, so there's a lot of metadata going on with this particular view here. Um, and it's grouped by year, so I can see the different years of the inputs that I processed. If I go down a bit more, we can see 2023. And so you can see I still have some orange ones to go through, but you know we're getting there. And I really like this query a lot because it just gives me like a timeline view of literally everything that I've done in my vault. And it's pretty, pretty easy. I exclude some folders and then I really just say, give me a list of the row links where file.day. It's really, it's just, does the note have a date in the title? And so other than my journal or other journals or readwise um, and certain project files, the only things that have dates in them in the note titles is the inputs. So it all just gets grabbed and it's pretty easy. And then group by file.day.year. So it just groups it by the year. So I I really like this note. It's, it hasn't changed much, but I've had this one since pretty much the beginning of my vault. And then this one is a random data view JS query that really just every time it refreshes, it gives you three random notes. So you know how I have talked about before in the past of doing like a random jumping through your vault to serendipitously come across new notes or old notes or things you want to, oh yeah, that note, that would actually tie in something I'm looking at right now. Linkages occur. And so doing that kind of process is great for not only uh, revitalizing the pathways of that information in your brain, but just making new connections and fun, exploring your vault and the ideas that you've collected. And with this particular one, this uh, query will actually update, I think every time something refreshes, like whenever data view actually refreshes, this actually changes the three notes. So you can just come over here, check it out. Oh, these are the three notes that we're gonna be looking at now. And you could go on with that or, or not. So that's pretty much everything except what is this little one? This is the only problem that I've had with the idea of a Obsidian Canvas dashboard for my entire vault. And this is the database folder plugin. These particular files are not displaying the database folder inside of the canvas. And I wasn't expecting it to, disappointed that it didn't, but a lot of what I'm also managing is really in here. So inside of my research and um, my uh, Zettelkasten processing DB folders. I've made videos about this before. Um, this is where I really manage my stuff because I love DB folder and um, data view because they make it much easier for me to just use data view, get a giant view into my uh, vault as a whole, all the data. And then I can use the different aspects of uh, database folder and it gives me basically like a database view, I know I'm saying view a lot, into my individual items. If I wanna see all of my uh, items that are not, or that are being processed or that are completed, I can see them by different types. So I could say books, or in this case, let's do papers. Yeah, let's do papers. And then let's see the ones, well, if I had like a ton of papers or articles really, um, I think all my articles are actually complete. But, oh, they're not. So I could say, hey, show me all of these articles that I'm not finished with yet. And you can progressively filter on these items. So I could say my input type, the processing stage, and I can easily sift through a large swath of inputs. And this is incredibly valuable if you just have a lot of stuff coming in because we don't wanna fall prey to the collector's fallacy, but at the same time, you can't always get to everything timely. And if you have executive dysfunction issues like I do, you do what the coins allow. 
even if that is put it in the vault, you'll get around to it maybe three years later, which I'm having that issue with several different things. Eventually, someday it will get processed and you can glean the value from it. And it's, you just need to forgive yourself and it's okay to do that. So that, and then again, the same thing really for uh, Zettelkasten is that it helps me keep track of the notes that are in various stages of processing. Here's all my seedlings. And so I could go through all of my list of seedlings and pick up from here and move them through processing. I could do you know random notes and jump through serendipitously, or I can actually with a targeted intention, go through my notes and process them and move them forward in the uh, workflow. But because those do not display in the canvas dashboard, I just leave a link up here by all of the other inbox items and it works. This is my dashboard and I hope you like it. I'd love to hear what you think about it. Let me know in the comments and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Check out Into the AM. You'll probably love their awesome looking and very comfortable t-shirts. And I'll catch y'all in the next one.